Okay, you guys. So, happy Halloween, happy Halloween, All Saints Eve, whatever you refer to it as. It is the full moon as well in Taurus. But before we get into that, I'm Chanel with Lizzie's Charm. Thank you for being here. If, if this is your first time being here and you're watching this on YouTube, make sure you subscribe if you want to see more videos like this. And this is gonna be your full moon penny card. But first, I'm gonna talk a little bit about the astrology for the full moon. Now, I am reading tropical astrology. So let's get into this. I'm gonna pull this up really quickly and talk a little bit about what influences that we can expect in the energies, the star energies that we can expect to kind of play out for us over these next kind of three days and carry us forward into this month of November where we are going to have a a Scorpio new moon, we're gonna have a Gemini moon, a Sagittarius moon. I believe it's a, gonna be a solar eclipse at the Sagittarius moon, it's a Gemini moon, it's gonna be a lunar eclipse. So we have a lot of powerful energy that we are about to be coming into and this is not really the start of it. We've been experiencing this for a while, but um, things are beginning to culminate, coming to an end. You know, we're a couple of days out from the election here in the United States. I know a lot of us will be happy that that is over and done with when it is. I know a lot of people are stressed out about it, but, you know, we have to take things as they go. So let's talk about it. So on the 31st, Halloween today, I don't know what time you wake up, but what is this, Central Standard Time? The moon will be conjunct Uranus and opposite the sun at around 9.45 a.m. So we can expect a lot of changes or shocking revelations or recognizing kind of where we need to see things from a higher perspective and this is things that have been hidden from us about our self-worth about our values about you know our finances what the things it is that we have and how we go about doing this and the energy it is that we are putting into it is it enough or not enough is it too much you know, are we overextending ourselves? Are we overworking ourselves? So the moon will only be in a aspect to the sun. So that will be the only energy outside of the conjunction with Uranus that we'll be experiencing. With that, this, you know, it might be a very electric day, a lot of shocking kind of things happening over the next three days. Um, a lot of insights coming in, especially when it comes to what it is that we are trying to attain in our life when it comes to our long-term goals and the things that bring us money, but also, what was I gonna say? It left me, um, but also our our uniqueness, that's what I was going to say, our authenticity and being in that, being comfortable in that and just, you know, like, hey, this is me, you know, and that is all about our self-worth, our self-value, but also our possessions. There may be some things changing with that. There may be some things surrounding the home that, ha that shift or come to light in a sense, you know, and things that really just need to shift a little bit because when the moon is in Taurus, it's exalted. So it's even better than when it's in its home sign of Cancer because 
it kind of Taurus is a fixed sign, so it it's very sure about how it's gonna go about what it is that it wants, what it is that it desires, you know, and also um, when it comes to the home, Taurus is all about having things and the moon is about the home, the roots, the family, you know, so with this being opposite the sun in Scorpio, it's gonna be a lot of depth coming up, a lot of things that have been piled on top of us, um, on top of behaviors, patterns, fears, things that have been holding us back that have been with us for a very long time. You know, these are things that we learned through just growing up and witnessing or just influences from family members, people close to us. You know, these things are changing. This is not coming, it's not going forward with us. We are stepping into who it is that we are. If we look at this from a perspective of uh, speaking of sidereal astrology, which is Vedic astrology, the moon would be in Aries. And that's all about individuality. And whichever vantage point you want to look at it, this is that still. Because with the Uranus conjunction, Uranus is all about authenticity, it's about being yourself, your unique self, you know, and doing what you do because it pleases you, but also it's also about humanitarian effort. So this is giving and showing up from a pure heart, you know, and offering something that you feel that can be of value to others, that can help support them in what it is that they their beauty, their pleasure, their feel good in life, you know, so this can be various things, whether it's food, whether it is a beauty, you know, whether it is healing, because Taurus is also a very healing energy, it's, it's the mother, it's the empress, you know, and then the moon is there, so all of these things are being illuminated for us to be a witness to observe and to recognize what steps it is that we need to go into and start operating in from a new space, uh, from a new mind, from a new heart, you know, and really letting go of that old, heavy, dense baggage that keep con that continues to perpetrate patterns in our life that <clears throat> that just don't work for us anymore that stop us from really being able to share our light with others granted there can be some things that are maybe tough to deal with or feel or seemingly tough to deal with in the moment at the time but in reality we can handle anything if we choose to be courageous you know there's always someone there to help you know, in Scorpio, it's all about other people. So <clears throat> reach out to those who you know will help you connect. There may be also a lot of reconciliation during this time because Scorpio is about intimate relationships and very close bonds, you know. So, and with the moon being in Taurus, is Taurus is a very loving, very pure kind of energetic space it loves to give it loves to have sure loves to receive but it also loves to give it loves to nurture and take care of others you know and those relationships that that we felt that are you know coming back around to kind of in to operate from a different kind of perspective from a different space that we have yet to witness ourselves interacting, you know? So, okay, guys, I think, let me see. Mars is still in retrograde. Mercury is still in retrograde. It's back in Libra. So we may be experiencing a lot of things. It's a lot of things when it comes to relationships and our individuality and who it is that we show up in our relationships, but also recognizing how we hadn't been perceiving things because Libra is of the mind. You know, Libra wants to know. And we're figuring that out by, with Venus 
Venus is there, yes. But with Mercury being in retrograde, because we're reconsidering things, we're restructuring things, re recognizing things, how we went wrong, or things that we just missed. And whether or not these energies were fair to us, have we, were, we, were they in balance? Were you giving too much and not receiving enough? Were you taking too much and not giving enough? You know, and then Venus is there. And Venus is the ruler of Libra and Taurus, right? So this is a lot of relationship energy. This is a lot of, it has a lot to do with that kind of soulmate by people that you've been with through lifetimes for a long time, you know, that really um, activate your heart space. You know, and also just really recognizing how it is that, what it is that we need to feel good, to feel pleasure. You know, I, I love to uh, be an activist for pleasure. Like, I feel like you should feel good in all the things that you do, whether it is the smallest thing or the largest thing. You know, there is a good thing in everything, even when it doesn't seem right. You know, because we are always learning something and Libra loves to learn it loves to expand its mind so it can know which decision to make because Libra is all about making decisions um and making taking the right step so that once uh, you know things it's all about it's like that halfway point where it's like okay am i doing this correctly am i doing this correctly what do i need to change so that i can get to the other side of the cycle, right? Because it, it's the seventh house. It's that halfway point between the ascendant, it's the descendant, it's the relationships, it's the connections, it's work, you know, all of those things involved with other people. Um, Libra is all about other people, you know? So, yes, what else? I think that's it. That's all. That's the only thing that I really want to touch on because everything else, like we have uh, Jupiter, Pluto, and Saturn in Capricorn. Those those planets are going to be there for some time until the end of the year. Pluto will be there still for another four years. Uh, Jupiter will be leaving this year, and so will Saturn going into Aquarius. And Neptune is still in retrograde in Pisces, which this is. Uh, uh, continuing to reveal stuff to us that we may have missed because Pisces is that the things that are, are of a hidden nature, you know, and it's about spirituality as well, that connection that we have with God, our soul, and all of those wonderful things. So we are going to get into this pretty card. So I have three stones for you to choose. So the first stone that we have is a desert rose selenite. Breathe in on that, see if that resonates with you. This, we have a green opal. And here we have some petrified wood. So one, two, or three. Desert rose, green opal, petrified wood, which one is calling to you? And we are going to get started with this pick a card. So, you guys, hope you're ready because I'm ready. So, let's go down this rabbit hole and see what spirit our ancestors, our guides, have to share with us on this Hallow's Eve. I'll be right back. I'm going to put the camera down so you can see the cards. All right. Okay, so I'm going to light this Palo Santo. It's incense for us. Palo Santo is very calming. It's very, um, it brings balance and grounds. It helps ground us. It also helps call in spirits. Okay. So let's get started. So for those of you who picked the desert rose, this is also called gypsum rose. 
selenite. Um, it's a very grounding stone. It's good for clearing negative energy. Um, it's also a very purifying stone. Um, it is very connected to the spiritual realm, the crown chakra, and also the root chakra with its grounding properties. Um, what else? It's a good stone to use during meditation and helps if you have a lot, hold a lot of worries and anxieties. So, group one, let's get to it and get these cards pulled for you. Okay. So, so what do you want us to know for group one, selenite group, ancestors, guys? Thank you for the sound space in this place. Thanks as you come through and support us as we pull these cards and receive your guidance and insight on this Halloween night. As this, well, this Halloween day morning, as the veil is very thin, we know and feel you all here present with us today even more so than every day. Thank you for showing up for us. I should. Okay. You guys, I think I'm gonna take these gloves off. I'm gonna take this gloves off. <laughs> One second. Okay, those were just made to be Halloween cute in, not shuffle cards. So, okay, let's get it going. Good morning for this tourist full moon. Okay, group one. So, let's see. So we have the Knight of Cups, Knight of Cups here. So you may be feeling very passionate about some new ideas um, coming up in your life that you are ready to kind of start, well, perhaps you've already begun um, making efforts in manifesting this or attempting to manifest this, but you may also be um, in a sense of longing uh, to have some type of connection. The thing about it is with the knights, they wear armor. So if you desire connection, you have to be willing to take off your shield and offer your cup to another. So in, in tap into those passions, but also this is about ideas or things it is that you're creating it's also important to do that as well because when you create and you're sharing things with others, you also have to be willing to be seen, willing to be connected with another, you know, and also follow your instincts. Don't, uh, don't disregard what it is that you feel that you should be doing. You know, just trust in the divine because Cups is about the connection to spirit, the connection to the divine. Do that, you know, so... Let's see what else is here. Temperance. So moderation, balance, having faith and trusting whatever it is that um, this Knight of Cups energy is calling you towards that you are basically moving into because the Knights, they, they are on the move. They're on the go. They're taking the action, even... With the Cups card, it's more of an emotional, creative energy, but perhaps, ooh, okay, so maybe you have also been a little bit into your emotions deeply? Yes, right. Um, and it's time for you, you're being called to uh, find a space of moderation, bring balance to your life, to what it is that you're doing. Um, so that you can get grounded because you got the seven of cups here like you may be kind of really caught up in the motions um and this may be of a mind thing a mental nature because temperance 
it's ruled by Ju ruled by Saturn. That's the ninth house energy. It's about knowing the knowledge. So maybe you need to learn how to get grounded in these ideas because this nine of cups, he looks kind of sad in a sense, you know, almost like he's waiting for something. But, uh, you know, we have, if we're waiting for some, waiting doesn't get anything done. We have to actually act on it, right? Because you are desiring this Ten of Pentacles. You want to succeed. You want to build a legacy. You want to have, feel like um, that you have family or, or family-like people around you, you know, but you first have to get grounded. You have to be practical about your pursuit in it and really trust that the time that it takes is going to pan out. Mm -hmm. Let's see what else is here. And the star, yeah. So you have to have faith in what it is that you're doing, you know, and kind of pack light. The this is this is an Aquarius card. Uranus is in your in Uranus is rule the ruler of Aquarius, and Uranus is in Taurus. So there is something that you need to change in regards to how it is that you were kind of escaping from what it is that actually step that actually needs to be taken so that you can gain this this energy here. Well, my hands, let me put this down. Yeah, you need to change your mind because although these are emotions that, that are happening here, um, it's a mental thing. These emotions are caused creating a mental block because when the, when the mental patterns happen, it's they come from an emotional uh, imprint that we latched onto whenever we latched onto that, and it became a a movie, a story. And stories are words. It's mind. It's mental energy. You know, so it's like you need to find balance in your heart, in your mind. Get into your body. See where your body is pulling you. What are you feeling? Maybe there's some healing that needs to take place here in order to kind of get you over to this this Ten of Pentacles and the Star card. Um, it's almost like you're trying to find happiness or desiring happiness. But you know, you have to do whatever it is that you have to do. You, you, only you can create your happiness. Only we can create our happiness. You know, take some time. You chose this, this, this selenite stone. Maybe there's some healing that needs to take place. That you need to clear your energy so that you can really wow. Because on the bottom you have the six of swords and the nine of swords, right? And then the four of cups. So. It's almost like whatever is going on in your head, it's very, it's exaggerated. It's not actually the thing. It's like you're trapped in this story that either, either you're trapped in this idea um, and have all of these ideas that you kind of need to ground or have all of these feelings that you need to bring down to reality to see what is true and what is not. But regardless, you have to take the time that you need to really get grounded. What is this? 10, 11, 16, that's seven. You got two sevens here. What is this? 15, 17. <laughs> <clears throat> no, this is 14, 17, so five. So definitely some change needs to happen. Um, 17 is eight. Yeah, it's, it's like a cycle that you've been kind of, that you're basically ready to come up out of so that you can really um, get into the space of being able to be receptive to what it is that you're trying to call into your life, whatever it is, whether it's a relationship, whether that is you creating something, whether it's a business, whether it's just a family, you know, it's, or connections with your family.
it's really a need to believe and trust the journey, trust the path, and trust that what's happening is meant. You know, everything is as it should be. Because even if we kind of ventured in the wrong direction or something unpleasant has happened, it is it everything we experience comes in experience comes into our life to bring us a sense of depth, you know, allow us to see things a, a, a little less shallow, you know, with a lot more love. Okay, we're going to pull two cards from here. Okay. Where are you being called to journey to? So, right, what is it? Well, do you know where it is that you're going? It's the question. Do you know where it is that you want to go? Do you know where it is that you should be going? It's, it's time for you to kind of take some time to go with things so that you can figure that out if you don't already know. And it's possible that if you don't already know, you're going to realize that you're going to recognize that, okay, I need to do X, Y, and Z so that I can get to the pie. You're already doing it. <laughs> so you need to, what this is, what it, this is saying to me, what it means is that you just need to stop questioning yourself. You are caught up in your mind of, am I doing the right thing? kind of like in this melancholy state, almost bored out of um, just simply being unsure, finding ways to escape and in reality, you're doing what you should be doing. You need to stop overthinking it because um, it's holding you back and it's, it's stopping you from being able to connect, really be in the journey and in the, in the experience is, it's the experience, you know? It's meant to be enjoyed. It's meant to be lived. You know, you're, what you're doing is building something that is purposeful. And that doesn't necessarily mean it's going to last forever, but with this Ten of Pentacles, Feels like it's gonna last for a really long time. Got the Earth card. So, with the Earth card, this is a lot about again manifesting, materializing, being here, perhaps or what it is that maybe what you're doing has to do with something earthly, something very Taurus nature, something of the body, something with food or something with um, herbs or, um, or even greens, plants, flowers, things of that nature, flower essences, essential oils, things like that. Or maybe these are the type of things that you need to connect with in order to kind of help you get out of your own way. Um, Earth also talks about, okay, so yes, it also talks about being grounded. This, again, kind of um, what I was talking about, something that you're doing or providing has something to do with helping others, you know, whatever it is know that you're doing the correct thing we are stewards of the earth you know you are a steward of the earth and it's important that you take that and um pay attention to the gifts these natural gifts that you have coming up so that you can utilize them in their best nature in their best way possible you're already doing that you just need to continue to believe so trust that you're that what you're doing is correct. Get very grounded in where you're going, what you're doing, 
make a plan, maybe write something down if you haven't already. Because it's time to end these old, these old mind patterns, these old mental constructs, to release these old um, emotions that continue to create, perpetrate these stories that are, I'm not going to say they're not true. Oh, they're not true. Not true in the way you are believing them to be, I should say. Okay, let's see. Yeah, wow. Okay, group one. So this is all about we got the second house. So this is a house of tours. You know, this is also it's about what it is that um you have, but also what it is that you have to give. You know, it's also about your self-worth. A lot of that. Um you really, it's almost like you're having this trouble in loving yourself. So I really want to encourage you to uh, do something that will help you clear that energy. Um, maybe you need to do some movement. Maybe some Reiki would help. Maybe meditation daily would help. Because it's a lot about self-worth, your values. Maybe you need to realign your actual life to your values. So like your day-to-day -day life. Um, and also maybe you need to reconnect with any type of relationships that you are desiring to. Because that may be blocking you. Or maybe you need to come to a closure of these relationships. Kind of. Maybe you need to see them in a different way. Come back into balance. Your perspective may need to change on how it is that you have seen them up until this time. Um, I really want to say take care of your health with this. I'm going to pull another card. I'm going to pull two of these cards. This also has a lot to do with whatever kind of um, relationships or how you've been viewing relationships. It's almost like you've kind of not been seeing things clearly in a sense when it comes to them. Um, and when you change your mind or you get this insight of uh, this mental change, it is going to um, get you to the other side of the rainbow. It's going to get you to that pot of gold right because this energy that you have maybe it's just the relationship with, with yourself is blocking you it's stopping you from what is waiting for you because the abundance is here <laughs> okay let's see so we got the king of cups here king of cups Number 24, that's a six, so you need to get more committed. In here it says, hand in hand indicates confiding disposition. When in close proximity, those numbers don't matter. Friendship will warm into love. When near 45, favor will be found with superiors and financial successes. Yeah, so you really need to connect with the people, people who you love, who make you feel good. Um, you may need to come into this new space of emotional maturity and be open to connecting with those who can really help you move forward, who can help elevate where it is that you're going. Wow, then you got the Queen of Cups here. So the Queen of Cups, number 23, this is a five. The ring, 
And this is the ring. So this is about commitment. Again, the ring when to the right of a person is an unerring indication of a rich and happy marriage, but lying to the left, disappointment and love. So if there has some been dis if there has been some disappointment in love, you really need to um take some time and rectify that either close that relationship out release that find some closure however it is that you're going to do that or you need to recognize that um it's okay to revive this love relationship and change your mind about it because it's going to offer you that love that you're seeking um that connection that you're seeking Okay, so group one, I hope that this was helpful. I hope that this supports you in this energy coming up. If so, please let me know, leave me a comment um, and share. I, I would like to hear what's going on with you um, and how this is manifesting for you. And I hope that you have a very prosperous and loving and pleasant full moon as best as you can. And um yeah have a wonderful weekend and i am sending you all my love and so many blessings okay we are off to group two bye group one hi group two so if you chose this green opal green opal is all about the heart it's about strengthening relationships um it also helps you move through fear uh, it also helps you express your love in, like in a genuine space, uh, from a genuine place, I should say. And it kind of helps with, not kind of, it does help with many, um, many afflictions when it comes to the inner strength that we have, that we hold dear within us, it kind of helps us recalibrate that and also move through any type of trauma and grief that we've held. Or if we, this is also a good stone, like if you've had um, any relationships that kind of have fell to the wayside and it's interesting because we have a lot of love relationship energy going on right now from the moon and Uranus being in Taurus, Mercury retrograde and Venus being in Libra, all about, um, you know, all about love, all about the heart space. And this helps clear any unwanted emotions that we hold, you know, so let's get into your reading and kind of meditate on this opal energy and see what comes up for you as we pull and go through these cards so let's get to shuffling On their matters of this full moon energy and towards group two. <laughs> Oh, blue too. Oh, wow. Okay, so similar to group one, group one has seven of cups as well, but group two, it, it feels like 
that you may be trying to run away from what it is that actually that you need to actually be paying more attention to so you can move through it uh really a need to it's almost like you want to manifest or come into this space of a relationship a healthy relationship but in reality you're kind of lost in emotions that don't serve you in a sense maybe this can also have something to do about what it is that you're creating uh that you are these new ideas that you have these many ideas that you have and desiring to make something solid, but can't because you are kind of trapped in this space of confusion. What? Really? All right. Group two, I feel like I want to reshuffle your cards, but I'm going to just keep going because these are the same cards that, <laughs> that group one had. So this is about a need to find balance because you got uh, temperance as well. So it's some change that needs to happen about what it is that you were believing, how it is that you're going about thinking about things. Wow, and how it is that you are kind of feeling about life and yourself and your path and the things that have happened within that and a need to really recognize that um, you, you hold the power for change, for expanding this into something new, something different. You know, it's cute. I have the Nine of Cups here. It's time to act on your passions. Act, follow your heart. Like, feel into your body and then let your heart guide you to what it is that is feeling right. You know, stop not acting on what it is that you feel should be happening, should be doing, the love you should be giving or you should be receiving. Maybe you need to speak up about something for yourself. Maybe it's something that you need to see a little bit differently. Let's see. Yeah. Wow. Okay. So the seer card, the seer speaks about being able to see the entire picture, recognizing why things have happened the way in which they have happened and the purpose um, and the lessons that they have kind of given you in your life. This is tapping into that sage, that wisdom that you gain after the lesson, after, after the trials, the trauma, the sadness, um, and really allowing that to help you balance what and where it is that you're going yeah you got the page of wands so it's time to take a new action do something different um be let it be inspired and move quickly because you seem to be really down in the dumps a little bit but this shift is happening um this year Uranus energy is not going to allow you to stay there any longer, whether it is going to put you in an uncomfortable position that's going to force you out of it, or it's just going to be like this aha moment and you're like, oh, okay, I can do that. I'm going to do that. That's what I need to do. You know, and it's like once you recognize that, then take that step and do that with new, fresh eyes, with an open heart, with with faith, with trust, with belief that it is possible. You know, time for transformation because it seems like you want something in your life that can be long lasting. Something that is long lasting, something that is, but what you have experienced in your life has given you the wisdom to be able to make that happen. Mm -hmm. 
Yeah, it's time to create something new for yourself um, and see things from a much higher perspective. Like, think it's almost like you, the reason why you're so sad is because you've been seeing things from a very shallow viewpoint. You need to call in spirit to help you raise. It's like, it's time for us to raise our vibration, everybody, not just you, group two but most definitely you too you know it's time to really see things differently have a higher perspective and recognize that everything that has happened has been for the good and it seems like you may not like the difference between you and group one group one is already in the process of doing it whereas you are kind of still stuck on being in this space of unsurety almost maybe if you have any type of escapism tendencies any type of habits that need to that kind of deter you from being able to go within um it would be a good time to take a break from it it needs some moderation not i'm not saying like you have to stop, whatever it is. It could be something as simple as watching TV or drinking too much coffee every day. But whatever it may be, you need some break. You know, so you're not alone if you are feeling alone because that's what this feels like. It feels like you feel like you're alone, you know, and you're not. You have, I know you would prefer the present company of real people. <laughs> But you have that too. But you have to call on them. Outside of the humans that you can call on, you have your ancestors. They are standing behind you. Call, call upon them as well. Set up an altar if you must. You should of your ancestors. And, you know, lead them some offerings. Goodness. I'm sorry, guys. This makes sense gonna be everywhere all right i'm just making it worse let me leave it how about that okay so um yeah call upon your ancestors set up an altar if you don't have one it's a great time to do that because um <clears throat> taurus energy is about um uh, in a sense it's about family because it's about having things what do you want to have who do you want to connect with and things like that so it seems your ancestors are here with you and, you know, connect with them, call on them, be courageous. They will help you and support you in your courage. They will help you see things from a higher perspective, you know, and allow you the space to be able to stop deceiving yourself of what it is that is not really the truth, you know, and help you tap into this wisdom that is kind of right in front of you yeah it's like you're taking things way too seriously as well like and it's like it's although group one got these same first three cards like this this feels so lonely you know so lonely like just really caught up in your own a really a deep longing for wanting to connect with other people but you first have to recognize whatever has happened happened for what it has happened for and start taking new action maybe you need to see that there are those right in front of you who you can connect with but you're just not recognizing and enjoying their company or perhaps there are people kind of waiting on you to open up in a sense so that because they want to connect with you like some new relationship may be coming in for you as well wow that's a death card death can you twice um so it's it's definitely time for you to offer yourself some type of nourishing love yourself for who it is that you are like in a very unconditional manner as if you were your child you know our children can do anything and we'll still love them 
Love yourself the same. Don't see the things that have happened in your life to be something to judge you. Instead, to learn more about yourself so that you can grow and have a good time. Like, it's okay. Everything is fine. But it's definitely time to do a new thing. This is many paths, right? So you may also be confused as to which path to go. But this card says any path you choose is going to lead you to where it is that you're trying to get to. You just have to do it start it right and and be committed to it don't you know don't waste any more time and you may just be realizing that like and you also have a lot of things available to you right in your face as well like the seven of cups speaks of the gifts that you already have use them use one use two don't get carried away with trying to do too much at one time, you know, but start somewhere doing something because once you begin, things will begin to take off and move and start to manifest in ways that you did not expect them to. People will start coming in that, you know, were blocked from you before based off of you still being stuck in a space of emotions that don't really that no longer serve you it's time to create the life that you want but you first have to move on and see things from a higher perspective And you got the Uranus card. So it's definitely time to shift how you view yourself, um, how you project yourself outwardly, um, how you feel about who it is that you are, your, your unique essence, you know, your innovative self. You know, it's time for you to believe and have faith and, and trust and have fun. <clears throat> you really need to lighten up you too. because you were really caught up in all of these ideas and you know feeling like there's no one there for you and in reality if that is not necessarily the case you first need to open up uranus is the car is the planet of friends <laughs> so you have friends you have people in this realm and in the spiritual realm but you are not recognizing that for what reason i'm not sure you know but that is definitely for you to i don't want to say take time to figure it out but you just need to kind of move away from that space because it's expired it's no longer working and uranus is going to come through and either make it uncomfortable for you and push you into doing something different or you're just going to be like all right it's going to be a download and you're going to be like, okay, I see. I need to do this instead. Or you're going to choose. You're going to finally make a choice. That that is what it is that you want to do. <clears throat> or where, what you want to do. I'm going to pull a little more, see what's here, what else we're going to pull two cards from here.
So you got the King of Wands, which is in the which is the bear. So the bear says it's a sign of successful speculations. So whatever you've been assuming that you should be doing, <laughs> please do that. You know, it change where this, this kind of space of stillness that you've been in and do what you feel that you have been called to do. The bear is also a very motherly energy. Um, and you got this star mother card at the bottom over here. It's really time for you to nurture and love on yourself. See yourself from a different light. You really need to see things from a higher perspective. And then you got the four of swords, which is the eye. So the eye denotes great interest taken by friends. When distant, it signifies suspicion. So maybe you have also been in the space of not trusting people, which is why you feel so alone. And it seems like either you need to, hmm, so with the seer card here, maybe you have you felt like you have been betrayed by these relationships in the past. Might be with someone of a Sagittarius nature. Um, or maybe a water sign, but it feels like with this this temperance card in the middle, it feels like it may have been a Sagittarius. And then you got this king of wands energy, fire sign. <clears throat> you know, so maybe you've also been <clears throat> believing that believing something of someone and it's probably the truth but if there is something that you have been planning some type of group effort with others that is definitely something that you should get into and have fun with because that will be successful um it will be something that you have to kind of plan in a sense but four of swords it also speaks about is this not actually of swords but clubs are swords energy so a four of swords is like being in this again melancholy space um also like this need of healing that needs to take place so i definitely say um take some time to rest your mind so that you can actually enjoy what it is that you're about to set out on. And really love yourself for who it is that you are, no matter what has happened. It doesn't matter. There are people who are going to accept you for who it is that you are, no matter what. Right? You could probably tell them your whole life story and they would not care. They're going to love you anyway. Because some people are, are just that, you know. So, okay, group two, I'm going to leave it there. I hope that this was helpful for you. If so, please let me know in the comments. I would love to know how this is taking place, manifesting for you in your life. And how this resonated for you. Um, Yes, and that will be it. Uh, so I hope that you have a very pleasant full moon, a very um, revelatory full moon that helps set you off on this new path. And I am sending you all my love and so many blessings. All right, group two. Bye. Hi, group three. Welcome to your full moon reading. So, if you chose how three, get some order here. <laughs> if you chose how three, then you chose the petrified wood. And petrified wood basically it helps you move beyond petty concerns. Um, it also supports in getting very grounded. It helps you connect to your roots. Uh, whether that is familiar roots or your internal roots, 
um, to help support you in moving forward, kind of like in this space of courage. And also it's a stone of protection as well. And um, it helps you move out of habitual mistakes, you know, really um, come into a new space of, it, it kind of in a sense lightens the load, you know, it brings a sense of safety and kind of removes you, not kind of, why do I keep saying that? And it helps take you out of that survival space, you know, not being able to really trust that the abundance that you desire is already present. You know, it's also very um, calming and helps you tap into that wisdom that you need of the experiences that you've had, you know, and helps you stay very connected, like that whole mind, body, spirit connection, very grounded in that and removes, it helps you remove obstacles by being able to see what needs to be transformed in your life so that you can kind of, you know, get out of your own way. Um, it also helps you in making shit happen, make your goals happen, you know, really, um, it, because it brings that grounding energy that supports you in being able to make the plan and carry it out. So, okay, group three, let's get your cards shuffled and lay them out. So, thank you. As did you intercede on behalf of group three and share with us the insight and guidance that you would like for them to know for this um, forest full moon? What insight? What steps do you believe or feel they should be taking? Please let us know. Thank you for showing up and supporting us today. Y'all seen me shuffle this cards. You gotta be kidding me. Wow. All right. I'm gonna shuffle these again. I'm sorry, group three, because this is, this is crazy. Those are the exact same cards as group one and two. Spirit, group three. If those are the cards that you, the message that you want group three to have, Please let them have it. But I feel the need to shuffle again. Okay. Let's try this again. <laughs> it's interesting. It's, it's similar energy. All right. So you have the Five of Swords, Group 3. So maybe there has kind of, there has been some type of, first, maybe there needs to be some change in your mind about what it is that's going on with you in your life, with the people in your life. Whatever type of conflict that's been going on, perhaps in a sense it's been affecting your confidence of being able to move forward in a peaceful state of mind. Um, perhaps there has been some type of competition that it's time to let go of. Maybe you have been trying to win 
a mental battle that you may just be having a, with yourself and not really anyone else. It feels like that this may just be all about you and not the actual people around you. But at the same time, maybe you need to change the people around you. If the relationships that you're having with them are making you feel this way. Let's see. Wow. So you got the six of cups. So there is something about the relationships it is that you have. Um, the Maybe the way that you've been interacting with your relationships have been from a space of um, past transgressions. And it's time for you to let that go. Wow, this is different cards, same energy. Okay. So it's almost like you need to kind of let go of those aspects of yourself that have been interrupted, corrupted, that have been put on pause and locked away in a closet out of not being able to be in a space to connect genuinely. Perhaps this is just simply about you needing to reconnect to your own sense of innocence out of um, not seeing yourself in a very healthy way. Your perception of yourself may not be the healthiest. But that is coming to an end, you know, but you cannot continue to miss it or it's gonna to continue to put you in the same cycle and it's going to crystallize this in your life and you're gonna to continue to experience for quite experience it for quite some time. So you have to be willing to recognize what needs to be released so that you can elevate, graduate, ascend out of <clears throat> what it is that you've been experiencing all this time you know, really need to see the light so that you can have a much more enjoyable life so that old cycles in your life can end and die and you can really come into this space of completion of this energy here. <clears throat> It's time to let go of the burdens. Maybe it okay. So you have been, this is about opinions of other people and how it is that you perceive them to feel about you. And, you know, that doesn't do anything but weigh us down. You know, it, you've been carrying these things out of, I don't know, perhaps you created a story around this and okay. yeah, so perhaps you were kind of also caught up in old stories of old relationships. You know, it's kind of like in a sense with the petrified wood continuing to make the same mistakes in relationships and this creating this narrative this cycle of then you having taken on the opinions of others based out of how you went about carrying yourself within these relationships and it's time to let that go it's time to take flight and do something new um but to also recognize that it lies within you, the power, your power, your authority. Know who you are. Be that, do that. Change your mind about that. This, sure, this might have to do with other people, but in reality, it has less to do with the other people than it has to do with you and you trusting and being willing to move forward after the fact. It's a very mental thing. And, but this is something old. The, the mental 
block is created from an emotion that was triggered when you were younger that keeps continuing to play out these cycles in your life but it's time to create something new by letting go of these burdens and and kind of throwing all of this shit into the fire let the flames take it so that you can rise up and do something new do something bigger better you know so that you can regain your passion of life because this it's just heavy. It doesn't, um, like, this is a different cards, but very similar energy to group one and group two. Group two was feeling very lonely. Um, group one was just, uh, in a sense, needing to recognize that they have what they need. But you need to see yourself in a higher light so that you can enjoy life again because it's like you want this six of cups again you desire this connection this genuine heartfelt soulmate type of connection but this mental block continues to play out in your life but it's coming to an end uranus is not letting this go on like uranus wants it light okay like you cannot carry it forward if because uranus is all about purpose lifelong goals like and like hey this is air over here you can't take all of that with you you gotta flow with the wind go with the wind go wherever it is taking you and you can't do that by being caught up on things from the past it's time to enjoy life again like it feels like that you really haven't been authentically and genuinely enjoying life and it's going to be up to you to be to make the steps to make whatever moves that need to happen in order for you to one pack light and two trust again. And to also just believe that you're worthy of connection, of love. A great gathering, soul tribe. So yeah connect it, this is this has been happening with people who are your tribe and it's time to let this go so that you can come back together with them so that you can reignite the passion that was present before in y'all's relationship you know but this is also about listening to where it is that you're being guided to, to go, to take. Okay, so like I was saying, you want to um, pay attention to where it is that you are being, what your intuition is, is where and what it is that your intuition is guiding you to because it's like this five of swords energy has kind of, it almost manifests as a scattered energy. But what scattered energy really is, is creative energy desiring to express itself. So take some time to listen and follow the guidance that you are receiving. Yes, sisterhood of the rose. So maybe there are, there's a, some women that you, who want to connect with, need to connect with, or perhaps you just need to be um, committed to a spiritual practice to help you ground yourself, um, really get into devotion, devotional work. Maybe you also be, need to be getting up and, and beautifying yourself, taking better care of yourself, it feels like, um, especially with this Six of Cups being here. And this five of swords, it's very easy when you've been 
down on yourself for so long to not really care and, and, and take care of yourself. Maybe there is someone you can connect with um, who can help you with this, who can help guide you in releasing these burdens. Um, maybe you are already connected with this person, can help you move through these cycles. A group of people, a group of women, you know, some sisters that will help you if you're a woman, um, which I feel like you probably are, the majority of women who watch my videos. But um, yes, someone, or and this may also be you needing to tap in to your priestess mystic energy, right? So with all this wand energy, this makes me feel like that maybe you need to put something in the fire that's full of yeah. Write some things down that you want to let go and burn them so they can be released. Um, kind of get into some ritual work <clears throat> so that you can free your mind on a spirit level. Kind of break any hexes, any type of um, binds that are holding you back. And five of swords also speaks about pettiness. And I just thought about that with the petrified wood. You probably need really need to come out of that kind of space of being so nitpicky about things, especially when it comes to connecting with people. And it's like you're so nitpicky about other people that you're not even paying attention to yourself in some type of way. And the nitpickiness, that is the Ten of Wands, right? Because that's carrying other people's burdens, worrying about other people's flaws, <laughs> other people's shit. Like, we are all here learning. You know, we have to trust that. Definitely um, <clears throat> some fire work, fire magic. Maybe you need to light a candle and just burn some stuff away. The time master. So. This is interesting. <laughs> Do you feel like you're running out of time? You have to know that you are in control of the timing of everything that is happening in your life. You will never run out of time. Time is infinite. Um, although we have been told otherwise, we have the ability to control the timing of things. Sometimes there are times when the energy that is present does not necessarily serve the movement that we are trying to make. But you have to be, it's almost like you're deceiving yourself. I think what it feels like is that you believe that you've ran out of time. But even if you're 64, if you're 75, you can start today, all right? It, it's, you know, we can awaken, enlighten, be enlightened, um, start a project, uh, start a hobby, build new relationships at any time, you know? And they will take whatever it takes to build them, create them, you know, make it real, which 
Yeah. Something is definitely trying to happen here, some type of movement. But you first have to get out of your own way and don't stall yourself out of thinking that you've ran out of time. Don't stall yourself out of being trapped in a space and time. I need to let go of really old things that don't exist here in the present moment, but are are energies that are simply being recycled, not actual experiences. Don't let the wisdom miss you by continuing to be caught in the old thing. So this is the second half of summer to savor, to savor the moment, really enjoy where it is that you are. You need to, if you were really stuck in the past, um, and this full moon is bringing you to the present moment, pulling you out of that energy and assisting you in releasing the old dead weight that stop you from really being able to be inspired about life, to enjoy life, you know, to really embrace life. I'm gonna pull a couple of these little montages. Let's see what else is here to close out your reading, group three. So we got the Ten of Pentacles. And it's the scythe, which um, basically is used to harvest wheat. It also is used to cut grass and farm as well. So it seems like you were just been in this really disappointed space. Every this disappointment is ending. This is a ten. That disappointment is a transformation taking place in how it is that you've been feeling about um just life in general and the havings of life but then you got the ten of cups see yeah the ten of hearts bouquet of flowers long an indication of a long and happy life Extraordinary honors and fame. So, group three, I really want to say that in these old ways of <laughs> going about seeing, perceiving, and interacting with life, that is all really changing for you. And this full moon is really bringing you something. It may be something unexpected. You may, you know, you may have just been in this really down in the dumps place for a long time, but things are about to turn around for you. They are about to change. You're about to really be enjoying life, enjoying loving others and the people around you and being able to see things from a higher and lighter perspective. Um, that almost brought me to tears. <clears throat> Because at the bottom, you also have a house. So maybe you were moving or just moved. But 
So in the house speaks about successes in all ventures. And if you're if you are presently unpleasant, your future will be prosperous. And maybe, maybe meeting a um you may be meeting something, meeting someone, a soulmate, a lover, a relationship, maybe someone of marriage is coming up, coming near you soon because you are gathering a culmination. This person might be of a fire sign, Aries, Leo, Sagittarius, but this is a general reading, so we don't really have to get into the signs, but um, yeah. Group three, it has been confusing. It has been consuming, you know, but life is taking a turn from you, for you. Um, you are regaining your innocence, your joy, uh, just that really true feel good energy in your life. And I, I I love to see it, honestly. <laughs> wow. So that was a great ending to your reading, group three. I hope that this was helpful. And <clears throat> this incense got my throat. Give me one second. Okay, I'm sorry, group three. My throat is doing its thing. But yeah, I... um. I hope that this was helpful. If so, please let me know. And I would love to know how this resonates for you, if you are open to share. And I hope that you have a very pleasant full moon and that you receive all the things in your life that were completely unexpected. And I hope that you have a wonderful weekend and a joyful and fulfilling Halloween. <laughs> so I will see you all soon. I'm going to raise up the camera here. Hey, you guys. So if you will, I'm going to be premiering this. So you're still watching this. If you are watching the premiere, um, I hope that you all have a really fun Halloween, whatever it is you choose to do, even if it's staying in the house. Um, I hope that this full moon shocks your world in the best way and that you just receive so many blessings um, and so much insight and so much wisdom for whatever it is that you need to take on or start new or begin again you know so thank you so much for being here um i really enjoy being able to be here and do this with you guys and i hope that you have a fabulous weekend and i will see you soon okay all my love so many blessings um